Hey, welcome to the table. We're here today to talk about Red Storm, the air war over central Germany, 1987. Um, boy, was I a fool in picking up this game. Uh, <laughs> and I, I say that in a, in a nice way. Um, I honestly believe I'm over my head, folks. Uh, this game has so much. And, and, um, First of all, there will be no gameplay in this initial video. This is just an introduction. But yes, I am going to try to do a actual gameplay, teach you how to play this game, and also uh, try to do one of the solitaire missions. Um, the funny thing is, is it recommends doing the two-player mission where you just play both sides. And we might try that instead. I don't know. I mean, it's I'm still up on the air on what to do. All I can tell you is that I'm overwhelmed with this game. Why am I overwhelmed? It's, well, first of all, let's just talk about some of the great things. I mean, look at the size of this map. This is the game board here, which is a paper map. I'm not real happy about that, but it is huge. I mean, all my components right now are, you know, just all over everything. But it's my understanding that on a particular scenario, we may only like spend it in the top left corner of the map and like the rest of this isn't even used. Um, I don't think this game is epic in that kind of way. Like this map is huge, but that doesn't mean that the, the game is gonna use the entire map all at once. It's just that it has like over 30 scenarios and I think they go to various locations um, throughout uh, Germany here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, what else do I like? Well, I mean, the these are very tiny um, cardboard chits. I actually don't like that, but I think it makes sense given what you learn what they how they're used. Um, this this giant board has these tiny little cardboard pieces, and you sort of need it because if you look at the size of the hex on the board, I mean that fills up the whole hex. I mean you couldn't get any bigger than that. I mean this this map is insane. Um, but with that being said, um, so let's say this was Compass Games, I would be ripping and tearing these. I mean, look at how sweet and solid these are. These things punched beautifully. GMT Games, you got it figured out. The rest of Wargaming does not, especially these tiny little components like these. Like, I always run into, whenever I get tiny components like this, that they, they don't punch properly, they, they rip, they tear, you know, the spines or whatever cause all kinds of issues. I mean, look at how crisp. Every single one. I mean, I didn't have a single problem with anything. I mean, I'm just grabbing hand. Like, the worst that I had is like, these two are still stuck together because I was just popping them in mass. But look, they just come right apart. There's no ripping, there's no tearing. I mean, solid corners. I know some of you clip your corners and that's fine, uh, please do. The, the point I'm making though is that nothing tore. I mean, the component quality of this was superb. Um, no complaints. Uh, like I said, I would rather had a, a hard map than a paper map because, uh, like for example, up there near Essen, the uh, paper is still, you can see it has a bend to it. So these tiny little components aren't gonna stay on there very well. They're gonna slide down uh, just from gravity. Um, so it's annoying. I've had several of my games sitting on these uh, to try to flatten this thing out as much as I can. Yes, I do have plexiglass, but it's underneath three other games I have set up right now. Um, so I, I am trying to cheat a little bit, but neither here nor there. So what is this game about? Well, the first thing is, is this game's about, um, uh, you get different scenarios. Uh, there is a campaign, but it's not for solitaire. So I'm not sure how well the campaign's gonna work um, for a solitaire. So if you're planning on buying this for solitaire, um, unless you're willing to play all sides, th there is no campaign in this. Um, there's only four solitaire missions, but I was told they're, they're good ones and meaty. Um, we'll see. And uh, basically, uh, you take your missions and you then have to plan your mission path. And you would uh, have a, what's called an ingress and egress, so meaning uh, entrance and an exit, right? And, and then you would plan your path and say, okay, 
my planes are going to go this way and then we're going to bomb these targets over here and then we're going to read up re rejoin here at this waypoint and then exit um that's the idea uh you can play as the russians or the americans or nato in this case um warsaw pact or nato to be more precise um all those things are possible and um this game emulates the uh uh, the different types of radar that are in pl in active, or sorry, in play at that era, 1987, the different types of aircraft, um, and then in typical GMT style, uh, wonderful, wonderful player aids came with the game that shows you all the different aircraft for the different countries and uh, what their stats are, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's player aid after player aid after player aid after player aid. Uh, this is the part where I'm talking about how I'm overwhelmed. So, uh, now let's talk about some of the bad, besides the paper map. The bad is, is I, I really don't like, for example, B-17 Queen of the Skies, because, or the Hunters, or even Picket Duty, which I bought and uh, regretted buying. Um, the reason I don't like those games is I don't like a game where I just constantly roll dice to see what happens to me. And this game is precariously close to being that way. Now, it is not that way. I get to choose where I want to go. I get to choose my path. There are some things that are put in my my uh, realm of control, which is why I'm okay with it. But there are um, a crap ton of dice rolls in this to see if this happens or that happens to see if this turns on, to see if that turns on, to see if you're detected. Oh, you're partially detected. And then there's a whole bunch of modifiers to your dice rolls. Well, if this happens, you need to add plus two to your dice roll. If that happens, you need to add minus one. Um, I'm not a big fan of the constant lookups and the constant um, modifications to die rolls. Uh, Folklore the Affliction. I own that game. It's a dungeon romping game. I have never covered that game on here. Be largely because it's just a giant die roll modifier fest. And I didn't enjoy it um, for that reason. I did it first, but then uh, it just wore on me as time went on. And I'm worried that this game is going to do the same. The other thing about this game that seems to be a negative for me is, um, <clears throat> and it's the other thing I don't particularly like about games, is, um, you know, games like this, is that... Uh, Oh, I lost my thought. One second. <clears throat> I remember. It's the, uh, for every rule, there's 30 counter rules and exceptions to the rules. And I know they're, they're all here for um, reality purposes, but reality isn't fun <laughs> um, sometimes. I, I actually like a game that abstracts reality. So when it gets closer and closer to being reality, I would rather play it on a computer. That's usually my, my, there's like a line for me. I can't fully define that line for you. But this line strikes me as this would make a wonderful computer game more than a board game. Now, uh, another thing is, is this is out on Vassal. And uh, you can get it for free. I don't, I mean, I think you have to certify you own the game, which I do. Um, and I might do the playthrough on Vassal just because, I mean, look at all the pieces we have. I mean, that's a crap ton of pieces. But uh, anyways, so let's, let's talk about this a little bit more from an introduction perspective. Go through some of the components and, um, and you know, see if this game's the right game for you. First of all, uh, these are all Russian uh, planes. The question mark here means that um, it's uh, an unidentified. Basically, it's there. And what's interesting about this game is that, like, it's meant to be played two players, most of the scenarios. So you can have what's called a dummy plane, which is, like, it's a plane that's really not there. It's a decoy. So you put these out, and they're on the board, but not all of them are real. And the idea is, is until your radar picks them up, uh, you're not going to know if they're real or not real. So... But you still see something because you're a player and you're looking at the game board and these are on the board. <laughs> so it's it's a little funny because 
obviously in real life, you're not going to know they're there at all. Um, but I guess you could just say, okay, some spy on the ground, you know, is radioing in through his, you know, radio that's in the heel of his shoe, letting you know that something just took off, something big, you know, so we at least know something's coming, right? And that's what this identifies. So this is the Danilov pilot, right? Um, and then uh, once they're identified, it would be this, and then the little heart symbol is just a uh, poker thing, you know, 52 card deck thing. You have poker, you have hearts, you have spades. Um, and that comes into play with some tables, like you're actually going to roll a die, and the die roll will say if it's a heart, this happens, if it's a spade, that happens. And so somewhere in here is more Danilov uh, tokens. I couldn't find them right now if my life depended on it. But uh, there's other varying levels of detection. There's like four levels of detection. And so what each of these are is like, for example, I found a, well, here's a BB, for example. It just means it's an unknown BB. Oh, here we go. There's a B and RR. I would swear I saw more than one Ivanov. So there's an Ivanov. Yeah, this is a, a futile attempt to try to find more. But I, all I'm trying to say is that there are more. <laughs> um, so Ivanov has more... Um, Things in here, and, and there's four levels of detection. So basically, you're going to have two chits for each pilot, if you will. I think these DDs and Gs are, they're not specific pilots. They're just meant to be, you know, certain types of aircraft. Um, but that could be the other thing, too. And maybe that's what I'm referring to. So the, the pilot himself, anyways, I don't want to speak out of out of turn. But, but basically, as... Uh, the mission goes on, you're going to have unidentified um, planes that will eventually become partially identified and then gradually become fully identified. Um, and that's um, the reason why you have so many dang tokens. Because for every pilot, if you will, there's going to be two copies of chits. And, and if you really want to be uh, thorough, you're going to want to sort all these out, which as you can tell, I haven't done yet. And I was attempting to do it on uh, the fly here, and I failed miserably. So um, let me find in the rule book where, uh, here we go. So you can see here, uh, we actually have the question marks are the undetected, and then the detected side is going to look like that. Those are generic counters, and then these are uh, actual flight counters. Uh, same deal where it shows the named pilot. Um, and it actually shows the actual um, uh, type of aircraft that it is. So uh, I would swear um, then there's visual ID. Like there's a whole bunch of things just talking about like the different levels of detection that, the, that you can have for an airplane. Um, that alone is half a page of uh, discussion. And I know it's in the beginning here and of course I'll find it later all right so uh, the other thing uh, this is probably better to look at is the rule book does a real good job of explaining we were just looking at the USSR uh, this is Germany um, I think that's that's Belgian gosh I don't remember what GDR is um, the Netherlands the United States the United Kingdom Canada so who's missing France France is missing. So, uh, I know that would be, no, that's Germany. So, we can look this up real quick because they got this really cool thing. And so, GDR is Germans. Oh, and FRG is the Federal Republic of Germany and then the German Democratic Republic. So, uh, West Germany versus East Germany. That's the reason why I was getting hung up. Those are two different Germanies. And, um, anyways, back to uh, the uh, components. There are components for, um, you know, if you do a defensive formation, they have this thing called the defensive wheel, which um, isn't worth explaining at the moment because I wouldn't do it justice, but it's meant for, like, you're flying in a certain formation so that way you can't be ambushed or uh, surprised. Um, you have a whole bunch of tokens that uh, identify whether or not you're your pilots just tried to avoid a SAM missile. Um, and now the reason why that's important is because 
you have a certain number of movement points. And if you uh, if somebody fired a SAM missile at you and you avoided it, this would go on your pilot. So when it becomes your pilot's turn to move, uh, in order to remove this token, it costs you one full movement point because it's basically simulating that you you went off course, right, to avoid that SAM missile. So that burned fuel, that did whatever, so that reduced your movement points for the next turn. Um, you're going to have radar. So this will be uh, radar that uh, fired. And uh, let's see. They have various markers for determining when hits happen. Oh, here we go. You have SAM uh, warning stations. This is a SAM station that's off. This is the SAM station that's on. And the key difference, of course, is that um, obviously they're not going to detect anybody while they're off, but uh, they're susceptible for anti-radar missiles, the harms, or the arms, if you will. Um, so by turning them on, you're running a risk that you're going to get destroyed, uh, but turning them on is going to help save your bacon. Uh, there's anti-air um Obviously, they're, the SAM missiles themselves are anti-air, and then there's AAA, and then you have uh, AAA right here on the map. So see that little L? That means it's a light anti-air that's here in Finthen. And so this particular city has a uh, light anti-air that's always on, and in, it can manage a range of one hex all the way around it. So anything that flies near it is going to be susceptible to it. Um, and I take it back, it is not always on because uh, you can shut it off. And the reason being is that it'll hit your own allies if you're in that area. So once it turns on, it hits everybody because it's just flak. It's not, um, it's not you know, radar guided or anything like that. So there's all kinds of, uh, like I said, the most of the tokens are the different nations. So you can see here, uh, there's a big chunk of uh, the mixed nations here. Uh, I don't remember which one this one would be, but I would guess this is the Western or Eastern Germany. And then you have a whole bunch of United States ones. And then over here um, are some, uh, now we're getting into some of the, uh, the special tokens of which there's Russian special tokens and then there's American ones. And then this is like um, when your radar, you can have a partial match or you can have a full acquisition. And this is a missile lock. Um, for your radar stations. And um, there's varying levels of altitude. You have uh, the deck altitude, low, medium, high, so forth, and um, your uh, missiles and whatnot. This, of course, is uh, what kind of, uh, I think it's, uh, this is the flak. Oh, and there's even nukes. <laughs> um, when you do your turns, you can do a max turn, but it impacts you and your ability to uh, fight. If you do, you can climb multiple altitude levels on a singular turn, and there's movement rules for all that. Um, this game is a giant uh, if-then-else statement. Um, every time you do something, there's a giant if-then-else statement. And, and that's the, the reason I said in the beginning I'm, I'm intimidated. You know, I'm probably doing a half decent job of describing the game at a high level, uh, but the devil's in the details, and um, I cannot express enough how much detail there is. So, uh, for example, this is a U.S. aircraft chart. So you can see here we have. Um, so let's grab one that we uh, we're always familiar with, um, the F-15 Eagle, right? So it has one crew, uh, three, I don't know what RWY stands for, uh, 10 fuel, but when you start getting over here, it has a RWR jam, right? So it has a B rating for its RWR, which is like a radar, and 3D for jamming. Uh, it uses APG-63 LDTS radar, and I don't actually remember what those numbers are for, um, and then for combat, uh, it does, you know, there's close and then there's long distance. And, uh, basically this 445 and then the dash is for, um, the altitude. So low, 
medium, high, and then I think very high. So I guess they can't attack at very high altitude. Um, and then dash is just uh, basically afterburner. And then maneuver. 899 is, um, I believe that's movement points that you get. Um, so it's how maneuverable you are, which 899 is pretty darn good. They're very maneuverable. Um, and it does have capabilities at night. Uh, you can see here that there's um, specialized munitions on the F-16, which the F-15 doesn't have. And then, of course, for their air-to-air, -air, they're the kings of that. So they got some AIM-7s, AIM-9s. Um, and then uh, it has some notes, B and J, which... <laughs> I guess we've got to find where the notes section is. And there's notes down here at the bottom. So B, they have automatic BVR engagement success. May attempt to engage two different enemy fights in a BVR combat. So BVR stands for Beyond Visual Range. And then J is Roll Determine the AIM-9 model for each flight. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, there's, it's just insanity. you got to do all this stuff. Um, but it's also what's cool. Like, I, I really like that. So what I did was is I bought... Now, this is something you have to pay extra for. And there's a, a link, I think, to a printer. And the printer will... Uh, they get this to me within a week. So, um, and of course, I'm in Central United States. Uh, but what these are is these are uh, aircraft data cards. So when you uh, select your mission, uh, as you was able to see, there's this uh, big, giant player aid. You know, with all these American aircraft on it, right? Well, when you do a mission, you're not going to have all of these on your mission. There may only be three or four. Of them there on your mission so you can go here and just select your your aircraft from this and for example we are looking at the f-15 eagle which i believe was this one right here so this has that same information we were just talking about um, there's the very high high medium low slash deck altitudes um, i think that's fuel and there's the three runway thing again um, so I think you need to have a runway of at least three quality or because you can damage the runway is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, here's where it's saying that it fights at night. It has the auto BVR two targets. So that special ability is listed here. And you can see that there's there's the AIM-9 IRM, the gun, and then AIM-7s. And, um, and then these numbers will mean something when you're actually in the battle. Uh, the pluses, of course, are always good. And... Um, uh, it's a it's part of the modifiers to to determine and you can see right here is the the radar level rating is B and it uses 3d jamming and this is the radar type so all that information we just looked at is here and um, the difference though is, is this has even more information because it has these uh, numbers which I don't think the other one did if I'm looking at it no it did not so um, there was another chart in here that you would have to look at for those. So um, so let's say you got an F-15 going on your mission. You know, you just grab, let's see what other, we can take a Phantom with us. It's interesting, they got Corsairs. Um, well, there's an F-15C, so obviously I don't remember which one we were doing. We were doing the A. We were looking at the A. And, you know, you can take a, a warthog with you. Um, nice little aardvark, which then right here is the F-16, which has some of these specialized uh, bombing uh, items and and so forth. So I, I don't mean to over overthink this or overdo this, uh, but um, this is not necessary to play the game. It just makes life a little maybe simpler. Everything you need to know, I think everything you need to know is on here. So then when you're resolving your F-15s, you can just use your reference card without having to have this big player aid, which is a wonderful player aid, by the way. Um, I have no gripes at all with that player aid. GMT makes wonderful player aids. Oops. Now, speaking of player aids, we have a whole bunch more, and, and I know, um, uh, what is it, the guys, uh, oh, they're very popular. The guys who do uh, wargaming videos did an unboxing of this. 
which they always do. That all they do anymore is unbox games. They don't actually play it. Um, but they they showed you in the unboxing all the different uh, equipment or types of uh, things. So obviously Belgium, Canada, and Netherlands can participate on missions. So they have their own uh, version of the same sheet. So it saves you from having these. I always love this. Even DVG does stuff like this, where they show you the different types of planes and and give you some some history on them. And then, of course, we have the exact same thing, but now it's the uh, Warsaw Pack side. And so this is all of USSR. And on the back is the, uh, the East Germany uh, version of the USSR planes. So uh, what I just effectively did is I just took three of the player aids and just put them aside. And they're, they're very large player aids. I mean, you know, that's the Russian one. And then you have another one that's just as big for the Americans. So put all those... Just leave that down. I'm gonna put all those aside and replace them with a few of these. So that's that's the idea. Um, I do recommend the cards. Whoever took the time to make them, they did a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, okay. So what else do we got? We got um, this is Player Aid Three, which has this is what I'm getting at. You have a, a flight quality table. Um, you have all these charts that you're constant. This is like a giant game of. Um, B-17 Queen of the Skies in some respects. You just have chart after chart. Like this one's for d applying damage. This one's for air-to-ground attack. And then look at all these modifiers. See, just there, there's modifiers for different types of attacks. If you're using EOGB attacks, you got a different set of modifiers. And more modifiers over there if it's an arm attack. And then notes. Attack profiles, these are the different types of bombing you could choose to do. Um, now, with that being said, this is a wonderful player aid. Uh, it's, like I said, it, it's not my cup of tea in terms of a game because you have all these dang modifiers, but this player aid is top notch. Um, it even gets into different hemispheres and which ways you can attack, like this is your forward beam, forward arc, rear beam, rear arc, etc. So, um, this is, of course, a player aid you're going to want to keep. And then we it just keeps going. I mean, you got more and more. Uh, you have player aid card four. That This shows the uh, sequence of play during the scenario, the things you have to do during setup. So let's talk about that real quick, because we, uh, we do typically set up a game, and then we play it. Um, you know, video one is set up. Uh, I would say video two is going to be set up. I'm just, I don't know enough to do setup for you right now. Um, but basically you're gonna determine weather. You're gonna do this ground plan phasing or where the scenario tells you how what the air defense status is, how many SAMs, dummy SAMs, dummy radars, etc. that you get. When you're playing solitaire, there's no such thing as dummy radars or dummy anything. So there's certain phases of the game that just get skipped when you're playing solitaire. And that's true even if you're playing all sides. Because the, the rule book actually explains to you how to play all sides if you wanted to do it. And the dummy phases are, are gone in both those. Because, I mean, think about it for a second. You you know which ones are real and which ones aren't. So don't pretend like you don't. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's up to you how you want to do it. But the game rules skips most of these dummy things. <clears throat> then there's an ISR phase. And the ISR table is actually on this player aid. Um, then you deploy. Uh, you set up your non-hidden AAA uh, ground units. Now, if you have hidden AAA, you write it in a, what's called a player log, and then you would reveal it to the other player once it gets, you know, revealed, right? So that way you can't lie and say, yeah, it was always there. <laughs> um, but in a solitaire game, this there is no such thing as hidden, so your stuff would just be on the board. Um, then you plan your raids. Um, if you're doing a, a campaign, there might be multiple series of raids, but the raids are like, okay, we're going to go do a fighter sweep. We're going to, you know, bomb some uh, SAM sites, and then we're going to bomb an actual target or whatever. Uh, so you have to plan those raids. You, you're you going to make the different corridors. I mean, and everything here is a reference to a section in the rule book. I mean, it, it's just insanity, the amount of stuff you have to do. And then the seed phase, um, you're going to roll in the seed table, apply the results. I don't even know what that does. Um, but, I mean, I know this is the um, 
This is a, I can't remember what it stands for, but it's your, it's your air detection. You're basically your radar. Um, the early warning phase, of course, is um, what's used to detect, uh, it's your radar, again. Um, I think this is more attacking the radar stations. This is more, um, you know, whether you detect the aircraft, this is whether you detect the radar station. That's what I think the difference is. So this is detecting enemy radar stations, and then this is detecting enemy planes. Um, then you deploy your air units, and then there's a radar phase. So yes, there's three different radar phases here, and they they're, the rules do explain what they do. I'm... I'm having to apologize a little bit because I don't have it all memorized enough to tell you the distinctions between them. I'm just letting you know there's a lot of radar me, uh, shenanigans that goes on in this game. You know, there's turning them on, turning them off, detecting them, partially detecting them. You know, there's there's so much stuff that goes on. So then when the scenario actually starts, you then do a random event, which is not done the first turn. There's a jamming phase. So... Um, uh, obviously, if your planes are in range to be detected, you can turn on your jamming to try to prevent them from detecting you, which the way this plays out is it basically turns into a um, a negative modifier to their dice roll in terms of being able to detect you. Then there's the detection phase, then movement phase, which is very interesting. And um, they even have like a chit pull. So if you're playing with two players, you're going to draw from a, a chit like a just a random chit from a, a you know a bag or whatever a cup and it's going to tell you how many of your planes you can move so you may have nine total planes but you only get to move four of them and everybody does eventually get to move it's just that you only get to do four and then the other player gets to move and they may have to move only three it depends on what you draw and um so then it gets back to you and you get to move again so it's a little bit random in terms of like, so you can't predict who's going to get to move first all the time. But when you do get to move four, you get to pick which four. It's just that everybody moves only one time. I mean, they'll have a certain number of movement points, so they'll get to move multiple spaces, but they only get to do that one time. And then there's a fuel phase, which I have not read at all yet, but obviously you can run out of fuel um, or maybe have to abort your mission. <laughs> um, you know, drop your munitions, all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's a SAM location phase, which is different than these other phases. And then a tracking phase, which, um, again, um, both players roll, determine whether uh, other detected enemy flights, if any, become undetected. So basically, if you were detected, you could actually become undetected uh, during this phase. SAM acquisition is whether or not they acquire you. And, of course, if you're within range, they may uh, attack you. Um, now, the arm attacks. Arms are anti-radar missiles. And what's really interesting in this game is that you declare that you launched an arm. So the other player knows that you launched an arm, but you don't declare the target. So they have to guess which target you're going after. And so they have an opportunity to shut their SAMs off, right, to, to try to avoid getting hit. So they know the arm's been fired. They don't know what exactly the target is that it's being fired at. And so they're allowed to shut down any number of their SAM stations, maybe even all of them, uh, if they're really paranoid. And um, uh, even after they shut them down, that doesn't mean that it's going to be safe. It just gives a, like, a negative six to the die roll like, it's a pretty nice uh, boost to the die roll in their favor. Um, and uh, it's a very interesting game. I, I, that's why I'm, I want to play this, even though I feel like I'm in over my head. Um, so it's, it's, what I think is awesome about this is that, you know, you declare that you've launched some missiles. The other player has to react to it. Now, in Solitaire, I, I need to read up on how the AI is going to react to this. Um, That'll be interesting because it's got to be some kind of random effect thing. I don't know. But um, uh, this, to me, is a very cool cat and mouse part of the game. Uh, if you were playing two players, I think this is a super cool cat and mouse part of the game. Um, maybe a little bit lost in a solitaire mode. We're, we're going to find out. 
And then there's an admin phase where you basically roll for recovery and move your SAMs if they're mobile, blah, 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 crew rescue, all that stuff. And then um, once the scenario is over, then you do a recovery, bomb damage assessment, but so over. Um, another interesting aspect of the game is when you launch your missiles or your bombs, uh, you'll determine that you hit the target. But hitting the target means various things. And, and, um, and those hits just sit on the target. And it's not until the, the round or whatever of the scenario is over that you actually determine whether or not those hits actually destroyed the target. So there's like a delay. Like you know you hit the target, you know, here, here, and here. And it'll even have the number of hits. Like you keep track of the number of hits. But then um, uh, whether or not you actually destroyed the target gets resolved later, like at a later phase. And, and so you could possibly be lured into, you know, well, I'm not sure if three hits is enough. So you're going to probably hit four, five, and six, right? You could, you could still, with the planes that have not yet, you know, taken their turn, um, apply even more hits if you wanted. So it's very cool. Uh, this is definitely a player aid we will use a lot. And um, the uh, seed table and all this other stuff is definitely going to be a part of it. Uh, right here is the full solo rules sequence of play, which is very, very good. So during the jamming phase, for example, um, they want to cover the maximum number of human player SAMs with acquisition markers. Um, during the detection phase, make the maximum number of detection attempts on human player flights. So basically, they're always trying to detect us. Uh, the bot always takes the initiative if it's possible. You know, there's an initiative thing. After each chit is pulled by the bot, follow instructions on the player aid. Um, then during SAM location, only real bot flights, not the generic ones, make SAM location attempts. And roll for both sides, SAM acquisition, C33.4. So, so we've got to look that up to see what exactly they would do uh, in that phase when we're firing the arms at them. And they do have some bot instructions, uh, which I find interesting. And you can see here, this is the bot. So they have a flight activation table. Um, there's a movement phase order. And this is where those little, remember those poker symbols I was talking about? Or, you know, playing cards. Uh, this is where that comes in. So if you roll one to a three, then the hearts go. A four to six, then the spades will go. You know, stuff like that. Um, See, there's some combat actions, some primary actions, like what they would do if they have uh, damaged aircraft, crippled, you know, there's, this is very much like um, Enemy Action Arden, which um, I thought was an okay game. I didn't, uh, like at the end of the day, I thought it was more work than it was worth, and that's what I'm worried about with this game, is that it's more work than it's worth. Um, <clears throat> so here you got the trip away activation table. And this is like, because remember, uh, the players get to decide if their AAA or uh, radar is actually going to turn on. And um, it's a big decision. And the fact that uh, you now have an AI bot controlling all this stuff, that's um, it's very interesting that they got these bot tables to help them decide where to go. So here we go, the bot SAM actions table. This is what we were talking about. SAMs will attempt to fire at moving enemy flights as soon as possible. Um, that makes sense. If detected enemy flight fires arm, all SAMs attempt to keep radar on. So basically, they're not going to shut any of them off. Now, that's interesting because when they shut the, the SAMs off, uh, it gives them a huge bonus. And let me see if I can find the, the table for that. Um... So basically, what I think it means is that the solitaire missions are going to be slightly easier than against a real opponent, uh, because a real opponent would shut some of them off. Um, with that being said, I'm sure that the solitaire missions were adjusted to be a little bit harder by the designer for that exact reason. So, just getting into the craziness, I mean, there's your SAM data table, SAM acquisition, 
Sam attack, Sam defense. So uh, somewhere in here should be that we chose to shut the Sam off. I can't find it at the moment, but but basically, um, well, here we go, the arm attack. So you announce the arm. If the flight's detected, enemy player may shut down radars voluntarily. If no voluntary shutdown, target takes arm morale check, fails on five or less, which means it shuts down anyways. <laughs> and um, these are some modifiers. Then you resolve the arm attack. So <clears throat> the arm attack, and of course the different types of arms are here. That must be on the last page here. Nope, it isn't. So wherever the arm attack table is, that's where that's where the action is. So I'll find that later. I don't think I can find that right here on the spot. But uh, I know that when you shut them down, uh, like I said, it gives them a nice little bonus so they don't get hit. Um, and so what they, we just read there is that the AI will keep them on at all times. So I know I'm getting into some of the details, but I wanted you to get a feel for this game. Um, that, you know, it has a lot of depth, a lot of interesting aspects to it. Uh, one other thing, and we'll get into this in more detail when we do setup, but um, I wanted to show you how a scenario looks and works. So let's move some stuff out of the way here. So this is the scenario book, and you can see it has a crap ton of missions. Um, there are 30 scenarios, two campaigns, and all of that is player versus player, or you're going to play all sides. And then there's one, two, three, four solo scenarios, A, B, C, and D. Now, for the solo scenarios, you have um, close air support, a fighter sleep, a hawk belt, and interdiction. Um, I think... I think this one is like an anti-radar one. I, I don't know. We, we can look at them real quick. But, but every scenario is going to have like an order of battle. So it'll tell you which units and markers are used for the scenario, what the ground setup is, what the air defense units are, etc. And, um, and then some of the conditions for weather, you know, things like that. Um, whether or not there's any uh, seed is... Uh, that would be destruction to uh, radar before the mission started. Like somebody went out and took out some radar. Um, and, you know, some special rules, etc. And then you get into even more special rules, your victory conditions. And somewhere in here would be... Well, here we go. So scenario one here is just two Hawk Seas and an EWR, which is, which is anti-rate, which is just a radar. So you have two Hoxies and an EWR. And then for Warsaw, they have one EWR and looks like a two SU-24s. And then there's an FGR-2, which is on cap. See, I don't know my planes very well, so I'm assuming those are all planes, right? So, one second. Okay, so I spared you some time looking through the cards. So, for this first scenario, which is just called Morning Recon, you can see here that there's a FGR-2, right? There's an FGR-2 that's in cap. And I believe that that's this Phantom FGR-2. So, he would be in this mission. And then down here, it says two Hawk Cs, And that's one of these, right? So, we have a Hawk C, which is a... Uh, what would you call that? Uh, that's like a SAM station, right? Um, so uh, that would be what the NATO has. And then for the Warsaw Pack, they have a SU-24MR, which is this guy. And um, he's in recon mode. The other one's in cap. And then there's going to be an EWR unit, which um, is really just one of these little chits, right? Because there's going to be... Um, and I'm not going to pause to look for it, but somewhere in here is going to be like an EWR chit. Um, so then, uh, you know, what's the victory conditions? Um, 
The NATO side wins if it accomplishes the four tasks, detection and visual identification of the WP recon flight. That's this one. Conduct a successful BVR air-to-air -air engagement of the WP flight, which would be him. So a BVR engagement would be beyond visual range. So that would be the, um, uh, I'm assuming the Skyfish would do that. I don't think the AIM-9 is BVR, but we'll find out. Um, so I would need to hit it with that. Um, conduct a successful air-to-air -air combat engagement of the WP flight, which is Warsaw Pack flight. If the engagement occurs, resolve it as its normal air-to-air, -air, but neither player may fire any shots. Treat it, so this is just crazy. So basically, this is just a clanging of, of swords. Resolve it as if it were normal BVR, but the NATO player may not fire any shots. So you're just doing BVR without actually resolving the BVR. And then if NATO accomplishes these four tasks, NATO wins. Otherwise, WP wins. Players should try this scenario at least twice, once with the WP flight at medium or high and faster speed, and once at deck. Um, so, in my opinion, this first scenario was like a learner scenario, which maybe we should do. Because um, you can see here, it's there's not a lot involved. you got two planes, right? They don't actually fight each other. Like, you're going to go through the steps to engage a fight, but then you don't actually shoot any munitions. So you're sort of just squawking at each other. And, and yeah, we have this. I don't know for what purpose. Um, and then we have an EWR, which, of course, is going to help us to try to detect them on radar. And we have an armored division, which, again, I don't know what exactly um, that does. So, um, but that's an idea of the scenario. So you're going to set everything up and it even tells you uh here that these are your targets so we have a hawk battery an hq supply and another hawk battery that's the reconnaissance objective so that's the objectives for the soviet so they're going to come in and they need to recon these oh that's why you need the hawk that's one of the things that needs to be recon and i guess we could shoot at it and you know various things like that um so it's interesting. I, I don't know, like it says we can't shoot at each other. Um, and you, here you can see achieve full SAM acquisition at the end of the two admin phases. So that would mean that like our Hawk got full SAM acquisition. But I guess it means we can't fire. I mean, the scenario doesn't say it. Um, and right here, uh, this scenario ends at the end of turn 15. At that point, roll for recovery. Uh, the WP recon flight must follow a path, and it's outlined here, which is interesting. This path must allow the recon flight to fly within one hex of each of the four hexes, four target hexes, at medium or lower altitude, to collect the required photographic electronic intelligence. The flight does not have to conduct actual recon runs. just needs to move within one hex. Ignore the following random events. The printed AA concentrations, blah, 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 must remain inactive. So I can't turn on the, uh, the anti-air that's, that's built into the map. It doesn't turn on for those various cities. So that would be, um, oh, here we go. And the actual rules I was looking for is over here. Rules of engagement. The NATO side may not attack the WP recon flight in any way. Instead, they have a list of other tasks to complete to try to chase away the flight. So basically, we, we simulate a BVR attack, but we don't actually launch a missile. And then we try to get into a dogfight with it, but we don't actually fire anything. It's interesting. I mean, maybe we should do this one just for a learning purpose, but, um, but yeah, there you go. That's scenario one, and there's 30 of these. So then uh, you get like near the end and there's the, this is where the campaigns come in. So I must break you. There was a scenario called I must break you. Very funny. Um, 
red balloons, 99 Luff balloons right there. <laughs> uh, the guy's got a good sense of humor. All right, um, final countdown. Here we go. This is campaign one. This is a bombing campaign. And so you have the targets of your bombing campaign are listed here. And this is a full-blown campaign. It's played over multiple raids. Um, so this would be uh, my style. It's a three-day campaign, by the way, according to the scenario or the campaign rules. This would be my style game, right, is to do that one. Then this next one is Eyes on Target, which is a recon campaign, also three days. And um, there's a lot of information. So then we get into the solo scenario. So like this would be the first one for us, the close air support. And we have these different targets on the ground that we're trying to destroy, I'm imagining. I haven't read it all. And there's a bunch of special rules, as you can see. And, um, and then some victory conditions. So the NATO player scores, raid targets VP as follows, blah, blah, blah. So... Um, I don't want to get into all those details. Uh, I'm going to have to consume another video just to set up this game. So we will do that. I'll pick a scenario. We'll set it up. And then let's play. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. And then uh, video three will be the actual playthrough. So let me know your thoughts. I mean, maybe some of you own this game, have played it before, are willing to maybe help me out uh, with some rules as I go. I've never played this before, so um, like I said, I'm very intimidated. It reminds me of Enemy Action Arden in terms of the complexity of the constant, you know, lookup tables and and rules with exceptions to the rules. But um, anyways, I really am looking forward to it. I enjoy air leader type games, which is why I have a lot of like Skies Above the Reich is one of my favorite games of all time. Hornet Leader is also up there. B-17 Leader. Like, I really love those types of games. So, anyways, uh, I want to give this a try. I bought this because it just looks fascinating. But at the same time, uh, I, I wish I had somebody else to, to help me learn it. Um, but uh, I don't think I can't handle it. It's the figuring it all out myself part is the, the part that I struggle with. And uh, I also am like... I'm like a fish. I see a bright light and I just immediately divert my attention to something else. So on the Finding Nemo. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. I hope this interests you. And uh, if it does, uh, look forward to getting this to the table.